Hi, Sherry. Super excited. This has been such a cool experience being here at the UWE and meeting amazing women like yourself. So can you share with me like who you are and what you do? Sure. So I am a mother of seven and I was a single mother of six children for a long time. Wow. And uh, when I got into the coaching field, because I had done, I had almost a whole different life before, before I got divorced and was a single mother. I had a lot of experience teaching. I even trained flight attendants. I had done a lot of different things. Um, but I decided I wanted to help mothers. I wanted to help single mothers who had gone through something similar as me. And I wanted to help them through that transition. And so I set out to do that and then my journey just kind of took me down a different path. I have, um, I have seven children now, but my oldest son, as a teenager, he really struggled. And so as I'm coaching these women, I'm also trying to get help for my son. Because anyone who has kids knows it's, it's, hard, it's almost impossible to help your own child. They Absolutely. Just, it's like the shoemaker and shoes for the, yeah, it, I get it. It's a statistic say that only one in 10 teenagers will even talk to their parents or open up about what's going on. And even then it's usually not the truth. And so I'm sending my son to counselors and therapists. He ended up in a behavioral health facility and nothing was helping him. And at the same time, I'm working with women and I'm having a lot of success. I'm loving what I'm doing. And they're asking me, will you do a class for teens? And my honest thought was, no way. I can't help my own teen. I'm not gonna go work with teenagers, are you kidding me? But after enough prodding, I did. I put together a four week course. I forced my son to come. I think he was about 15 at the time. And do you know, it was the first thing that helped him. It was the first thing that helped him overcome his suicidal thoughts because he had attempted suicide. And that's when I realized the power of what I had. And that's when I just immediately shifted my niche over to helping children. And so now my mission really is to be that person that I was looking for when I couldn't find help for my son. So you bring up a very valid point though. Helping children, you still have to have the marketing or the reach to the adults so they know where to, to be able to help the children. How do you approach the adults like what are you what are you saying or where do you share in order for those children to be able to find you well it's a good question because another thing i want to point out is that adults have a tendency to be willing to spend money on their children usually at least as parents before they'll spend it on themselves and so i have to say really I have been very blessed that they are seeking me out because kids today are struggling. They're not learning about this in schools. And so they're hearing, oh, there's this coach that helped my child stop cutting. I, I don't know why, but about 50 to 60% of my clients have been to therapy or counseling. And I, I, have, I have nothing but love and respect for people in that industry. But the ones that are coming to me, it has not been successful for them. And so where maybe they couldn't stop cutting in two years, they're able to stop cutting in a couple of months using the coaching techniques and skills that we use in my office. So the word of mouth got around, but what I wanted to point out was, when it comes to parents, they're usually like, hey, fix my child. Yes. Without recognizing how important it is for them to be part of the process. So now my coaching package includes, parents have to come at least after one of every four sessions. And that's one of the reasons I put together a course for parents so that I could, they're, they're coming to, because they think they their child's a problem, but they're also learning how to transform themselves. I think, so important. I think everybody's child will tell them, it ain't all my problem, right? But they it's, don't believe them. Exactly. They're like, you're acting out. It is you, you're impossible. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is really critical. This is the next generation, right? Yes. And when they say, the hand that rocks the cradle, rules the world and that really is the legacy that we leave behind i have three children myself um and i wish i knew now i wish i knew then what i know now exactly. it would have been so much better and that's i think that's that's the next question i'd like to actually ask you about is so we see a lot of people entering the coaching arena and i know that when you're in the coaching arena you think everybody is a coach but the reality is there's gazillions of people out there that need love and support and guidance, right? So being a coach, what is the greatest challenge that you find getting people to listen or open up or understand what you do? 
Well, I think it's just people not knowing how much they really would benefit from this. And I wouldn't believe it if it hadn't transformed my life the way that it has. So for me personally, I find the hardest thing is finding the message. Of course, when you talk about children, parents, it resonates. But when, it talk, when you talk about transforming adults and why they need it, a lot of times they're not ready to receive it. And finding a way to really help that message resonate with them, that if you're willing to change as the parent, if you're willing to be wrong about the way you're experiencing the situation and take some responsibility for, hey, maybe there are some things that I would benefit from learning to be able to communicate with my teenager. Even though I'm so well intended, maybe there's something that I could do differently. That's the message that I find is the most difficult to get to parents because parents already have in their mind, this is how I do things and this is how my child doesn't listen and this is why we're at where we're at and not always be willing to receive the information. Do you think some of that though is due to shame, fear, or guilt? It's always coming from fear, right? And there's usually a lot of shame there. Absolutely, but it's completely blocking them from being able to see. Yeah. And a lot of it is their upbringing, right? Or maybe one of the two parents has a way of doing things and the other parent just goes along to keep the peace. There's lots of reasons why, but that's my biggest obstacle because I will have parents um, that will bring their teenager to me regularly and they don't come to coaching. You know, they've been with me for maybe a while and they weren't required to come before and they just don't see the benefit in it. And so I see these children starting to change the way they're thinking, but when they come back, they're kind of, you know, things aren't changing at home and so they're struggling yeah. to really overcome their thinking. Absolutely. Can you share with us a time in your life? Because we are all about resilience here at Resilience TV and within the Resilience series. Can you share with us time in your life that you know intrinsically that without resilience, you're, you would not be where you're at? That's my entire life. <laughs> when, people, when people say, will you share your story with us? I'm like, what part? So um, I'll speed through this as quickly as I can, but I left home when I was 15. I had a terrible relationship with my mother. My parents were divorced and um, I just left. And I thought, well, I'm just not gonna put up with this anymore. I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. And I learned real quickly that that was not how life works. I became a mother at an early age. And so I, I, um, I remember thinking for a while that I had ruined my life because I had heard that from a lot of family members. Um, I didn't graduate at the time. I was an early mother, uh, you know, young mother, and I was I was having to do so much just to stay afloat. And so I started to believe all of the noise. And then one day I remember it just hit me like actually I have a choice. I don't have to believe what everybody else believes. And so I just had to decide I'm not going to let my past define who I am. Bingo. And the, yep. I'll tell you the, the saying that I love, that I, that I just live by. Well, I have two. One of them, everyone's heard, it's never too late to become the person you're going to be. But the thing that really keeps me going is that decisions determine destiny. And in coaching, what we learn is the first decision you're going to make about anything is what you're going to think about it when it happens. And when I change my thinking, and just so you know, this is, I hope this doesn't like, feel like bragging, but I, I went from being a 17-year-old a, a mother, completely broke, to 19 years old making six figures in the real estate field. And I know that that wasn't because my circumstances were easy. It was all my mindset. Yeah. I, it, I hear you. And you know what? We have so many correlations between our story. We oh, got a whole I can't other, wait. We'll have to catch yeah, up about absolutely. it. Absolutely. Real estate agent, too. Okay. So I get it. Okay. I get it. Good on you. Maybe there's something about real estate that forces you to get out I'm there. I'm telling you. Is there anything that you'd like to share to, uh, to parents out there who may be struggling right now with their kids? Because especially during COVID, we have seen children have very high rates of mental health issues, a lot of fear, um, a lot of inability to connect because they've been withdrawn or pulled. Is there anything that you could share with parents just maybe how to hold on or 
to, to seek the right answers? Well, first of all, there is hope. I think that we're living in a time now where at least we're talking about this and there are a lot of resources. I'll tell you, the parents that I encounter the most, uh, like the two extremes, are either taking on so much shame and guilt for where their children are, believing that they're not a good parent or that they've done something wrong, which is absolutely not true. And that's the, that's the thing I always want to offer parents right off the bat is that you are a fantastic parent. There's always ways that we can learn to uh, communicate and connect with our children, but children today are different because they're growing up in a different world yeah. and they are struggling. And then the other, the other extreme I see from parents is just this, this almost need to fight back and dig in heels and almost be aggressive uh, with the behavior that they're getting in return. And just recognizing that whenever things are coming from a place of love, we can figure out how to have healthy boundaries, yeah. healthy consequences, and always make decisions ahead of time and have it come from love, then we are going to see a turnaround in that behavior. And I think when parents can find that balance, when they can, you know, the other thing I tell parents is as long as your feelings are getting hurt or you're feeling sorry for yourself, you cannot help your child if you're the victim. So if you can get in a headspace of, I've been doing the best I can. I'm doing a great job. I love the thought. I, I know how to find the answers. Then it puts us in a place of creating and finding answers instead of living in this place where we're stuck that we don't know what to do or this is all my fault. If we can get there at a, just an even level, we will be able to help our children thrive. And there's hope. If I could do it with my son <laughs> when I wasn't coaching teens at the time, anybody can do it. Amazing. And we got that. That was awesome.